Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you already know, we already have started a project on machine learning. The project name is Heart Disease Prediction using machine learning. So I hope you guys have seen the promo of the project, that is the project demonstration in which I have stated what all things we are going to do in this particular project. I hope you have seen that. If not, then please search it on my channel or you can get the link to that particular video in the description box. Now, in this particular video, we'll proceed with that particular project. And in this video, we'll see the data set that we are going to use for that particular project. So this is the data set that I have taken for the project. You will get the link to this particular data set in the description box. And this data set I have got from Kaggle. Its name is heart.csv. Now, in this particular data set, you can see there are total 918 observations, which means there are total 918 rows and it has 12 attributes that is 12 columns you can see over here let me show you all the columns so this are 12 columns in this particular video we'll see the significance of each and every column you can see that this particular project is a binary classification project you can see the target column contains the two classes in it that is 0 and 1 1 means the heart disease present in the patient and zero means it is not. So let's start with the very first column, which is age column. Here you can see it is a numerical feature and its distribution goes from 28 to 77. It, you can see it follows a normal distribution. I hope this is clear. The next is the gender column. Here you can see there are two values, male and female, and it is a categorical feature we will have to convert it into numerical values because machine learning doesn't accept the string values. We'll have to convert it into numbers. So we'll do that in the data cleaning part that we are going to look into in the further videos. You can see the distribution of the male patient is 79% and the female patients as 21%. Next is the chest pain type. You can see there are total four classes in this. The first is ASY, that is asymptomatic type of chest pain. The next is NAP, that is non-anginal pain. The next is ATA. You can see it is a typical angina. And the last one is the TA, that is the typical angina. Let me show you that. You can see the values TA. So you can see the distribution. There are a lot of patients who are having ASY, that is asymptomatic type of chest pain. Let's move on to the next column, which is resting blood pressure. The distribution of resting blood pressure goes from 0 to 200. It's a numerical data. You can see there are certain patients whose blood pressure count is 0, which means it's not properly counted or it's not properly noted. In reality, blood pressure cannot be 0. That is why we'll have to remove or we'll have to fill these particular values with some relevant values. We'll have a look at it in the further videos, my data cleaning part. The next is the cholesterol level. Here you can see the cholesterol ranges from 0 to 603. It's a numerical feature. You can see certain patients are having zero cholesterol, or I would say more number of patients are having zero cholesterol, which states that the cholesterol level is not properly counted. That is why it is showing zero. In reality, it cannot be zero. So we'll see how we can deal with this particular condition in the upcoming videos. The next is the fasting blood sugar. You can see here, it is a categorical feature. It contains the values zeros and ones. More number of patients are having the value zero. Now let me state what exactly zero means. Zero means the blood sugar level is less than 120. And one means the blood sugar level is greater than 120. So I hope this thing is clear. The next is, the resting ECG, which is the resting electrocardiogram results. It is a categorical feature. It has three classes. First is normal. Second is LVH, which is left ventricular hypertrophy. And the other one is the ST level. You can see the distribution. There are a lot of patients who has a normal resting ECG count. Now, let's move on to the next, which is max HR, which is the heart rate. So this is the heart rate. The maximum heart rate that is achieved for every single patient. The distribution goes from 60 
to 200. You can see it follows a normal distribution. It's a numerical feature. The next is the exercise angina, which states that whether the angina is induced, that means the chest pain is induced after exercising or not. No means no chest pain is induced. And yes means that chest pain is induced after performing certain exercises by the patient. So you can see the distribution is almost equal. The next is old peak. It states the ST level and it goes from minus 2.6 to 6.2. You can see it follows this kind of distribution. We'll have a look at it. Its effect on the target column in the EDA process, that is exploratory data analysis process. The next is the ST slope. It states the slope of the peak exercise ST segment. It has total three classes, that is flat sloping, the next is up sloping, and the other one is down sloping. You can have a look at this particular data set. You can find out the third value, that is the down sloping. You can see over here, down. But these kind of values are very less. That is only 7% of the entire data accounts for this particular value. More number of patients are having flat type of ST slope. And now let's move on to the last column, which is the target column. And this particular column contains two values, 0 and 1. 0 means that the heart disease is not present. And 1 means that the heart disease is present. You can see this is not an imbalance data set because they are almost equal, like the distribution of the patients who are having the heart disease and who are not having the heart disease is almost equal. So there won't be a problem of imbalance in this particular data set. We'll have a look. If the problem arises, then we'll try to solve it. So these are the 12 columns. And I hope the significance of each column is clear to you all. If it's not clear, then while performing the EDA, we'll get the insights of every single column and the effect of it on the target column. So don't worry about it. I hope this particular thing is clear to you all. And with this, we'll end the video. I would like you all to provide your suggestions and reviews regarding this particular video and regarding the upcoming videos. For more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel.